Uh, it's you. a pleasure to be with you today and to see a dream that we outlined almost five years ago start to really come true. We outlined the relationship between the U.S. and India, not just being an important one, but potentially the most strategic in the world for both countries and a model for not just trade, but job creation, innovation, inclusion in a way that had never been done before. And much like the U.S. has seen over the last two years, large companies working with startups to help drive their own innovation, we're now saying let's do that between our two countries at a scale that has never been attempted before and one that I'm extremely optimistic will be very successful in the future. Today, I have a chance to interview two people that I care greatly about. Uh, the first is one of the leading diplomats in the world from India. Ambassador Sandhu, when you look at his background, it is like a perfect resume that if you were right out dreaming coming out of college, what you'd want to be able to do. Uh, he's a person that has held the most important uh, positions uh, in the diplomatic corps coming out of India. He started with the former Soviet Union, then evolved to Russia, then went on to Germany, uh, then went on to Sri Lanka and Ukraine. And this is his fourth session in the U.S. And in each of the sessions in the U.S., he was there at different stages, which is going to be my actual first question to him, watching what happened during the periods of the 1990s that was very uncertain between our two countries and the direction that we'd be able to do together. He paved the road for President Clinton's visit to India in year 2000. And I talked to President Clinton about how important that was in terms of his formulation of policy between our two countries. How uh, He's instrumental in three visits by Prime Minister Modi uh, to the United States. And then it was also the prior visit with President Obama. And as you know, President Obama and Prime Minister Modi had a very, very good relationship as well uh, in 2015 when he went there. But today, it's the most strategic relationship we have. It's one that is the most complex relationship in the world between the two largest democracies. So please join me in welcoming Ambassador Sandhu to join us today. Mr. Ambassador, it is an honor and thank you for being here. Let me ask you if you would make some opening comments with your thoughts and your, maybe your objectives for this session. And then if it's okay, it's my honor to do a fireside chat with you without the fair and without being in the same location. So Mr. Ambassador, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, John. Uh, thank you for hosting this event today and your kind words of introduction. And especially coming from you, you are not only a champ in the United States and how much you have done, but especially for our relationship, I think uh, your contribution is unmatched and uh, we have a deep appreciation of the role which you have played in the past and which you are going to continue playing. Uh, we have had a very interesting interactive session with the five leading Indian origin startups, e-connecting with everyone through this platform is indeed a pleasure. We are slowly learning to live with the virus. Technology has ensured that the countries remain operational during the period of lockdowns and social distancing. We are effectively using digital connectivity for teleworking, teleeducation, telemedicine, and for digital and contactless payments. Our tech companies have shown the way they are continuing to innovate in information supply, new digital platforms and tools for learning. Indian tech companies in the US and their offices across the world have been providing critical behind the scenes support to healthcare workers and life science companies. India also takes immense pride in the contribution of doctors, scientists, academicians of Indian origin who came to the United States in the pursuit of academic excellence and have distinguished themselves in diverse fields. The current pandemic has made us recognize the need of collaborations more than ever before. India's partnership with the United States in health sciences and technologies is long standing. We have closely collaborated in combating diseases such as tuberculosis, cancer, HIV, eye diseases, as well as on environmental health research. Under the India-US Vaccine Action Program, 
NIH and Indian Department of Biotechnology and ICMR have collab been collaborating for the last 33 years. From the initial days of the outbreak, our scientists and institutions have been actively engaged in exchange of information. India-US Science and Technology Endowment Fund and its call for proposals for COVID-19, virtual networks that will allow India and the US scientists and engineers engaged in the COVID-related research to carry on joint research activities through virtual mechanism and by leveraging current infrastructures and funding mechanisms. Indian pharma companies, which are world leaders in affordable, low-cost medicines and vaccines, are also collaborating with the US companies in vaccine development, therapeutics, and diagnostics. India is working with Gilead to establish a manufacturing base for MC Desivir. Similarly, India has been working with the US private sector in vaccine development. The global supply chain disruptions and rapid onset of current health crisis has made it imperative for companies and countries to innovate and respond quickly by changing strategies. Realizing the critical need for PPEs, the central and state governments in India, in collaboration with industry and workers, revamped existing production lines for manufacture of the PPEs in a short span of time. Within 60 days, the PPE industry in India witnessed a 56 times growth, and today India is producing nearly 4.5 lakh PPE kits every single day. We believe that the current pandemic presents an opportunity for India and the United States to further strengthen its close economic partnership. The interest is clearly visible among the industry leaders. The recent investments of US $5.7 billion by Facebook in India's Reliance Geo and the deal between Elias and India's Aditya Birla Group indicates the interest. India's huge domestic market, high-skilled workforce, existing advantages in digital services, along with its competitive tax regime and low labor costs make it an attractive investment destination. India's ease of doing business rankings have risen from 142 to 63, and we are working to further rise it. In series of announcements recently, Finance Minister of India outlined the economic reforms package. This package taken together with earlier announcements by the government during COVID crisis and decisions by Reserve Bank of India is to the tune of 265 million US dollars. That is Indian national rupees of 20 lakhs crores. The package also focuses on land, labor, liquidity, and laws. The idea is to provide an enabling environment to overcome the difficulties posed by abrupt halting of economic activity due to COVID-19, as well as to restart the engines of the economy. Critical reforms have been introduced by the government to promote business and attract investment. The FDI limits in contract manufacturing, defense, and mining have been increased. The recent changes in the insolvency and bankruptcy code, as well as move to decriminalize most of the sections of the Companies Act, where violations are technical or procedure in nature, has brought much needed relief for companies. Targeted incentives packages are there for focused sectors like electronics, pharma API, textile, food processing, medical devices, and electric mobility. We hope to see many fruitful India-US collaborations in the near future. Thank you. Mr. Ambassador, uh, this is John, and I'll jump right into a fair side chat if I can with you. Uh, the friendship uh, between our countries has come such a long way over the last two decades. 
Uh, very often, especially the younger people in this session who've never seen an economic downturn before in their business careers, you don't want to jump right into the current situation. You want to take a step back and share with us all just a quick summary of how this relationship from your perspective, which you saw firsthand in a way that no one else did uh, with the presidencies going from a almost confrontational relationship to building of trust, to win-win, to what I believe is the most strategic relationship in the world. Can you give us a little bit of color or background on this and then say, where do you think the relationship is today? And you know where I'm going, paint the picture for what you think it can be three to five years out. Yeah, uh, thank you, John. Uh, this relationship, as you have mentioned, and uh, I've had the privilege of seeing, and many of my predecessors actually have also served in similar capacities in number of times, and from them also I've heard. But personally, let me indicate to you, you know, if we look at uh, 70s, 80s, uh, when I was a student and when I joined the professional service, it's actually unimaginable. Uh, the way we are sitting today, the way we talk of the partnership, of the bonding, is something perhaps would have been a dream many years back. And going back in that famous visit of uh, President Clinton uh, to India in 2000, uh, in the current phase, I would say that was perhaps in the recent times, the first time when actually the US president touched the people. You know, they were, the United States was always a distant country and the president was even more distant. The visits used to be mostly to the main metropolis towns. If you recall, that was the first time in a small way he went to Jaipur and it was much pictured take it and contrast it to the recent visit of uh, President Trump. I think the real strength was visible when we see how thousands and thousands of people had come out to listen to the President of the United States, the warmth that was reflective for the United States and its President. I think if you actually look into those film or you see that on YouTube and a lot of it is connected with some of the high-tech area where you have been working. You know, those line of those people were all very young. Today, India is 54% is 27 years and below. That is the real strength. Those are the real backers of United States and India relationship. Uh, and that gives me the confidence that in coming years, this will go from strength to strength. At that time, we had seen in, in late 90s and early 2000, if you remember, that was the time when the ITEC boom had started. A lot of uh, on, on, the, on the area where Mukesh and you live, uh, that was where it was bubbling. Uh, a lot of Indian entrepreneurs were beginning to be success. And today, when we see when we see these young uh, innovators, uh, we can see how it has traveled and how much of potential it has for the future. So I'll say that I'm very confident seeing over years, I've seen a number of crises and I can say each time when one has gone through a crisis and I'll not enumerate them here, that every time I am I feel the confidence of our strong relationship, of our strong bonding, of the similarities of our systems, that we will go ahead and economy will continue to be the real driver between bringing our two countries together. And especially the startups, they are going to be the real future strength. They are going to bring back the economy back to its strength, which today it's almost looking impossible. But I'm sure when we talk 10 years later, we look at this time in the same way as we are looking at 90s and uh, 2000. 
you know, I share the same vision and I think almost everybody on this session shares that vision as well. Uh, if you could give us an update on the U.S. trade, India trade negotiations, it's one that both countries understand uh, the importance to remove this issue. And the longer issues stayed open, the more likely there are to be problems uh, evolve out of it. Uh, can you share with us uh, what is the current status and also tell us where we can help uh, as a group to get this trade deal done? Because it is so important to send that message to both countries and to remove it to, as an obstacle as we deal with other issues such as the economy, such as the pandemic, uh, such as defense, et cetera, on us. So uh, an update, Mr. Ambassador, but also what can we do to help and the goals of getting this resolved? Thank you, John. I continue to be very optimistic about the trade deal. And uh, I must mention that, yes, this current uh, unprecedented challenge has given a bit of a setback in the sense that the focus of all the governments uh, got to tackling the health crisis. But nevertheless, both the trade sides have been in touch. Uh, there have been virtual exchanges between both of them. The top leadership has also been talking about it. And I feel that perhaps in coming few weeks, we should be able to strike the smaller trade deal. As you know, the understanding between our leadership was that we will go in for the smaller one and then immediately start negotiations on the larger, on the bigger uh, trade deal between two countries. And on this, I can certainly, and I will draw in on the offer of help which you have given, because this time certainly has made it even more opportune to have this trade deals. And a lot of the trade deal also relates to some of the sectors for which it will be a win-win situation for both the sides. And it will help in the overall confidence building because during this particular phase, United States and India have been reliable partners. And I think that everybody has seen. Uh, in our case, whatever supply chain aspects, especially in pharma sector, which we were involved in, whatever the United States requested us, keeping in view our huge domestic requirements, but we it was ensured that all those supplies were supplied and at the same price. I think that has certainly had an impact that has given confidence here. And I feel that will be playing an important foundation to ensure that this smaller trade deal gets announced soon enough and then we can move ahead. Switching directions, and you've been in your role for four months, but you have a background, as I said earlier, almost like no other ambassador uh, from the U.S. to India or India to the U.S. has had. Uh, what are your priorities? You, you've been there four months. You're thinking about your priorities for this next year and then over the next three to five years. Uh, can you kind of share with us, and you've hit on several of them earlier, but share with us what are your top priorities and maybe the sequence ranging from immigration to uh, job creation, uh, et cetera, uh, on your, your focus? Uh, let me first indicate on the broader sense. Uh, John, like you, I'm a very strong believer in the United States-India partnership. I was in the past too, and I have seen that grow. But... I still believe that it's still tip of the iceberg. We have a long way to go. Certainly, we are in the correct direction. And therefore, the most important thing is that we need to see the broader picture. The broader picture between two of our countries coming together, you have already enumerated, we all are well aware of the similarities in our systems, in the predictability, et cetera, et cetera. So, on that broader net, we certainly need to be working much closer. Given that, in the immediate sense, as you have asked, my priorities, one of course, as you have highlighted, is relating to some of the visa issues. And in that, I've been underlining that the Indian Americans in the United States, whether it is the health sector, 
whether it's the IT in other innovative sectors, they have brought value. They have brought value addition to the United States. And therefore, I am a strong believer that whatever the challenges, political challenges come, but certainly this collaboration will continue and it may take different mechanisms. It may take different modes because in the post-COVID economy and economic world, you will see as our lives are getting impacted, the relationship, the economic relationship will also undergo some changes and new methodologies of cooperation will come through. But nevertheless, that's one of the priorities I have to convince the American side that it's a win-win situation. And secondly, as you have said, uh, one is the second you have already raised, that is the trade. So that's also an immediate uh, priority. But beyond that, also on investments on both sides, as you are aware that there are good Indian investments here and there are good American investments here in India. We want to certainly ensure that the FDIs rightfully come in India and are comfortable. Whatever glitches are there, those are removed and we become an important investment destination for US companies. They feel comfortable and that's another objective which I would be taking your help and all my friends help. You know, this session, I, I could go on for an hour on these topics and I'm learning so much and it's a chance for all of us to have a common vision and say, what can we do to accomplish really ambitious goals? But uh, unfortunately, we're running out of time. So I'd like to ask uh, the last question of you, Mr. Ambassador, uh, which is teach us a little bit about do's and don'ts. Uh, we tend to be by nature in business. Let's get it happen. And why can't it happen faster? Give us advice on how we can help India, you and the U.S. achieve its goals together. What are the mistakes perhaps we'll make? What should we do better? And if you were to enlist the people, both the large companies and the small companies uh, in this virtual meeting today, here's the vision you'd like for us to help you with. What would it be? I think on both sides, uh, John, we certainly need to learn from our experiences of how to do business in both the countries. Uh, like in India, when I, I like in the United States, when I'm talking to uh, the senators, the congressmen, I always tell them that the broader picture of India needs to be kept in mind. That it's a democratic polity. The direction is clear. It's moving in the positive side. And sometimes the pace may not be satisfying. But the satisfaction is that the direction is clear. And once it's moving that way, it will continue. And that's the strength of the democratic systems with other institutions like the courts, et cetera, et cetera. As far as uh, in U United States, uh, as far as India is concerned, I think you and your organization are pretty solid masters on that. I would only request and urge people to have patience that look at the pronouncements of my prime minister. They are very clear. They are as clear as can be, even on the area of the startups. Even right now, at the time, India is in the middle of the pandemic, but the prime minister has been taking the leadership, especially on ensuring that the reform agenda is moved ahead. And to that extent, we will greatly appreciate any inputs we can get from your partners, your associates, the US business, that these are the difficulties we are facing. And I assure you that we will take them up very quickly. Like in the case during the pandemic, uh, the Indian side, there were specific organizations which focused, part of the government which focused in creating and ensuring that the supply chains and whatever other difficulties the US companies were facing, reaching out to the state governments, to the local governments, uh, including my commerce department here, we were very much available. 
and we tried our best to ensure that whether it there were curfew passes or ensuring opening of some of the critical sectors those were undertaken and we will continue doing that through you i just once again want to assure that the embassy here is at your service we certainly look forward to hearing the inputs from you and we will faithfully communicate those not only communicate those we will also push that those are undertaken and people realize the importance of this relationship you know we're so honored uh, mr ambassador to have in prime minister modi uh one of the people and everybody knows this on the call that i think is in the top 3 leaders government leaders of my lifetime and understanding the importance of a digital india a digital world but also strategic relationship between our countries large companies small companies working together to create the jobs and to do something that almost anyone else would say would be impossible yet we can come together and i think change the future of our two countries and every citizen in the countries as well as the world i want to thank you deeply indebted for the time that you spent today it's a partnership that we will have for life we will hit bumps along the way and that will actually cause us to be even stronger together so it's an honor and once again please everyone join me for thanking the ambassador Thank, Thank you very you. much. <laughs>